Have you ever considered that arms for your chair are chairs for your arms? You're welcome. This time on the show, Windows Server containers finally make their entry into the Azure Kubernetes Hall of Fame. All US Azure regions now approved for FedRAMP high impact level. Mmm, delicious. And the number of updates, improvements, and changes to the Azure portal gets to a lot. Welcome to Azure This Week, a show made in the clouds from the leftover antimatter left in the Cloud Guru kitchen. Containers are hot. Container technology is fast becoming the new preferred way to deploy software and applications, and it makes sense. Having control of the entire environment from development through testing to deployment is extremely valuable for businesses. Earlier this month, Microsoft announced that Azure Kubernetes Services, or AKS, is the fastest growing compute service in Azure history. And this week, the first preview of Windows Server Container support in AKS was announced. In practical terms, this means you can manage Windows and Linux containers side by side in the same Kubernetes cluster with the exact same APIs, tools, and support. You also get integration with the DevOps pipeline, so you can take advantage of completely standardized pipeline. Check out the preview of Windows Server on Kubernetes today. And now for a bunch of terms and acronyms I have no idea what are. FedRAMP, P-ATO, impact level 90, J-A-B, N-I-S-T, barbecue and R-O-F-L. All US-based Azure regions are now approved for FedRAMP high impact level. Yes, I didn't know what this meant either, but in the TLDR sense, it means that Azure can now provide services to federal US agencies and other bodies requiring this level of standard for assessing, monitoring, and authorizing cloud computing products and services. FedRAMP is the US Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. It is a big deal for the many companies and agencies that rely on this standard to adopt cloud services. Currently, 91 Azure services, including Migrate, Security Center, FileSync, and most compute ones, uh, are supported. The roadmap includes 100% of the Azure services though, and that is the extent of my knowledge on that. I have covered the portal before, but it changes so often, I could do a whole show on it. Azure portal this week? The May updates for the portal include some interesting improvements and additions. First of all, the simplest of things. If you have used the portal for any length of time and tried to open links in new tabs, you'd felt the pain. The pain of broken tabs. Well, the team listened to our cries of pain and you can now open many portal links in new browser tabs and it will work. I know. Some services, including Azure containers, have received a full screen wizard experience with tabbed flow that makes my OCD happy. Instead of the puny little fly-in added on panels of yesterday, the full screen experience is easier to use and gives adequate focus to the task at hand. And for the Azure beginners amongst us, the quick start experience to help you create your first resources is now generally available. It has been in preview for a long time, but finally made it to the big league. For the full list of updates, check out the link below. And if you ever wondered where all the preview features live, try out the preview portal. The link is also below. And this is the part of the show that is the opposite to the beginning. The anti-start. We're at the end of this week's Azure goodies, but next week's show is already brewing and it'll have more Azure delightness for you. As we say on the A-Cloud Guru team when we do our daily meditation, seek and you shall cloud. See you next week and keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus.